Hello, this is Aaron, and welcome to part 6 of my 6502 Assembly Language series. I'll be continuing right on from part 5, so if you haven't seen the previous ones, you can find them at um, aaron.baher.biz, or if you found this at BitChute, um, the rest of them should be in my channel there. So, what we're looking at here on the left is the um, last um, bit of code that I did in part 5 when we made the division routine um, able to do a 32-bit, able to divide a 32-bit dividend by an 8-bit um, divisor. And the reason I originally, the reason I did that as my, kind of my first bit of code was that I wanted to be able to divide numbers by 10 because I wanted to be able to print numbers on the screen. And that's what I'm going to work on now. So um, this, what we'll be working on now, we'll use this bit of code. To clean things up a little bit, I'm going to turn this into basically a library file that can be used by others. Um, so I'm going to get rid of the part that um, kind of treated it as its own thing. Um, change this to say routine and take out this stuff that was in here for testing um, and then now we just have a we just have a library that can be used okay so save that so I'm going to create a new file I'll just call it main for now and this will be the one where we do the actual main part of the program that calls that that calls that routine. Um, so I have to put a couple things in here. I have to say two, and then the um, program that we want it to be called. And let's see. I'm going to take a look at one of my previous ones just to make remind myself how. Yeah, comma CBM. Okay. then the star equals tells it where to start. Now I'm going to move the location of my code um, to 1C100 because if we look at the, um, if we look over here in the Commodore 128, that's an empty section of memory that's not generally used for anything. Um, I think 13, yeah, 1300 is empty too. Why don't I use 1300? I was using B100, um, but I'm also using, I was using C100 as my location for storage, and so eventually I'm going to run into that if I keep, I keep writing stuff. So that's kind of a small, kind of a small chunk of available memory at B100, um, at 1300 is larger, so we'll move it to there. I'm also going to start a new, um, a new.org file just to make notes in here. Okay. So, we want to print a number on the screen. And first thing we have to think about is, okay, how do you print a number? Um, we don't have a routine in the 64, even if we wanted to use it, there isn't, a, well, there might be a routine to print out a number. It might be tucked away in the basic code somewhere, but there's not like a, a simple kernel routine to do it. And the whole point here is writing our own routines anyway. So we want to, we want to print out a number ourselves. Now, one thing we do have is a routine at, um, FFD2, which prints out a character, and we'll use that just so we don't have to um, reinvent too much of the wheel here right now. Um, eventually, if I were to, you know, if I'm going to write my own Commodore kernel or my own kernel to run on the Commodore, you know, my own complete operating system, I'll have to replace that. But for now, we can just use that. Um, and if we flip over here and look at the programmer's reference guide. Um, FFD2 um, in the uh, in the kernel documentation here is uh, BS out, which out outputs to the channel. And if you read down through this, it says if you 
if you do that if you output the screen data then that just goes to the screen at the current cursor the current cursor position so we don't have to deal with where it goes on the screen it'll just go wherever the cursor happens to be at the time so that'd be the easiest way to handle that for now and then down here a little ways we will source the um, div 32 by 8 file so that we get that routine to call so now we have to think about okay how do you print a number let's say we want to print one two three four five six seven eight nine zero let's let's print that number one billion 234 million and so on well you know you, you start by printing the one and then the two and so on right well but the computer doesn't know the computer doesn't know the number as this number it doesn't know it as one two three four five six you know it knows it in binary as ones and zeros so if you look at the let's see here I'll just use Perl here to print out what that is in hexadecimal. It's 49.9602d2. 49.9602d2. So that's how the computer sees it. And then if you put that in binary, that would be, let's see, 0100, 1001, 1001. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and let's see, D is, uh, I always have to think a little harder about the letters, um, 1, 1, let's see, yeah, D is 13, so yeah, 1, 1, 0, 1, uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, so that's what the computer is actually seeing with that number. So the question then is how do you print it out as a decimal number as one, two, three, four, you know, and so on. Well, if you think about, you know, how what does one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero actually mean as a number? Well it means one billion. You know, the one means one billion, the two means two hundred thousands, the three means three or two hundred millions, the three means three ten millions and so on. You know, if you go back to grade school and think about when you learned what the numbers actually mean that's how that works and so you know you would have to figure out okay I, the, the first digit is a one and then the next digit is a two and so on well to find out what the first digit is you could divide that number by a billion and you'd get one with the remainder of two or you know two or three or four and so on but the computer doesn't know where it needs to start dividing. You know, if you say you have a shorter number, one, two, three, four, you don't want to divide by a billion. You want to start by dividing by a thousand. So you need to start at the other end of the number. So how do you find out what the last digit is? Well, that's that's pretty easy. You can divide by ten. So let's say we divide that by ten. The number we get is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, with a remainder of zero. Okay. And then let's say we do that again. We divide by 10 again. We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 with a remainder of 9. Divide by 10 again. We get with a remainder of 8. And then a remainder of 7. And so you can see that the numbers we're going to get would be 0, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 until you get to the end. So those are the digits we want to print, but we've got them in the wrong order. So what can we do about that? How do we get them turned around, basically? Well, one way to reverse the order of something is to push them onto a stack as you get them, and then take them back off the stack in the reverse order. And since we have a stack in the, in the Commodore, in the 6502, um, that's going to be very handy for that. So we can push these digits as as we get the digits one at a time. We can push them on the stack, and then 
when we get done, we will pull them back off the stack in the reverse order. First in, uh, last out, or la last in, first out. Now, how do we know when we're done dividing? How do we know just not to keep dividing and you know getting zeros? Well, we will, we want to stop when we get down to to where the dividend is zero. So let's keep going here. Remainder of six, four, remainder of five, remainder of four, remainder of three, remainder of two, and then zero, remainder of one. That's where we want to stop because our dividend is now zero. So we're going to have to have a way to check and see when our dividend gets down to zero. That'll be part of the code. And so if we do all this, we, we, we go through this loop dividing by 10 until the dividend gets down to zero, pushing the remainders on the stack as we go. And then when we're done, we can pull the remainders back off the stack and print them out. That's going to be the, the general deal here. So let's uh, let's kind of write that out in pseudocode. We want to, well first of all we're going to have to store the dividend in the in the dividend location. So store the dividend. Um, set the divisor to 10 which will be in will be A in hexadecimal. Um, we want, we're going to need a counter because we need to count. That's another thing to think about. How when we when we get to here and we've pushed all these numbers onto the stack, all these digits onto the stack, and now it's time to get them off the stack. How do we know how many to pull off the stack? Well, we're going to need to count as we push them on the stack. So we're going to set a counter to zero here. Okay, and then we're going to start a loop. All right. Now in this loop, we want to divide the dividend by 10. Like we talked about up there, we want to push the remainder on the stack. Okay. And then we want to check Let's see if I'm forgetting anything. I don't think I am. We want to check if dividend is now zero. If it is, let's indent that. If zero, then we're done. We want to jump out of this loop. Otherwise, we want to, let's see. Okay, yeah, otherwise, we want to move the quotient to the dividend because now we want to take the quotient like up here we kept taking the quotient from the previous division and using it as the dividend dividing it by 10 so we take you know when we divided the first thing and got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 then we wanted to put that in the dividend location and and uh, I should say copy it's not really a move it's really a copy so we want to copy so if we're not done we want to copy the quotient to the dividend location and then loop so we'll go back to the top of our loop okay now one thing I'm forgetting here every time we push a remainder on the stack we want to increment our counter okay. now once we exit once we're done with the loop then we want to start loop 2 and in loop two, we want to pull digit off stack, print digit, decrement counter, check if counter is zero, and then exit loop, if zero, exit loop, and then we'll be done. Or actually, let's do it this way. Check if counter is zero. If not zero, loop. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to exit anyway because we'll, we'll run out of the end of the loop. All right. So let's think about if this is, if, if this is everything that we need. We're going to store it in the dividend location. And that's 
let's say copy to the dividend location and that's because we don't necessarily want to we don't necessarily want to clobber the the number that we're dividing because you know say this is a game and we're printing out the the score or something like that but we need to we probably need to keep the score wherever it is in memory we don't want to clobber that in our division routine clobbers the the dividend as it works on it so we want to copy it to the location from wherever the program happens to have it <clears throat> we set the divisor to 10 we set the counter and for our loop we start the loop divide the number by 10 push the remainder on the stack for our digit increment the counter to show that we did that check if the dividend is zero yet if it is we want to get out of the loop and go down here to loop two otherwise if it's not we want to copy the quotient to the dividend location and basically start back over up here with the loop and then once we're done with that once we do exit out when the dividend gets to zero we start the we start loop two and this should say loop two um, and that's where we're pulling the digits back off the stack, decrementing our counter that we incremented before, and so that we pull off the same number of digits. Um, because there could be other things on the stack, we can't assume that we just, you know, we can't assume that we're going to go until the stack is empty or anything like that. So we have to just pull off the number that we put on. All right. So I think that should be everything. Now, one thing to think about, I said here, check if dividend is zero. Well, how do you do that? Because our dividend, remember, is a 32-bit number. It's four bytes. And we can check if a single byte is zero with a, with a couple of different um, instructions. But how do we check if a four-byte value is zero? Well, you have to check if all four bytes are zero. And so... We don't want to exit the loop and let, until all four bytes are zero. And so, you know, if you start, if you think about what are we going to do here, basically, we're going to check if it's zero, and then if not zero, if any one of the bytes is not zero, then we know we need to keep looping, right? So if it's not zero, we can jump to copy quotient line. This next to this line, two lines down, we can jump right to there because we know that our dividend is not zero. Even if we haven't checked all four bytes yet, it doesn't matter. If one of them is not zero, then the whole value isn't zero. And so we can jump down to there. But we have to do this for all four now. And then if we get to here, then we jump to loop two. Now, that might be a little confusing at first because I just changed the I just I just changed the way this works. I just kind of turned it inside out. But what we're gonna do here is check four different bytes. Let's put it this way. Check if each dividend byte is zero. If it's not zero, we'll jump down to right here, which will then copy the quotient to the dividend and go back up to loop. If none of those hit this not zero, then we'll actually hit this jump to loop two line and we'll go down to here. So I think that should I think that should be what we need. So Let's start on that. Okay, we need to take a look at the div routine here. We want to copy our values to this dividend location, and then we're going to set this divisor location also. So we have these, we can use these names, these labels for locations. So, um, first thing I want to do is put the number down here which I can do with byte values. Um, where did my number go? 
There it is. All right, I'm going to turn these byte values around backwards because I want to put the last, I want to put the low, the low byte first, which is just kind of convention. All right. I don't think I need to use uh, semicolons at the end of any of these lines, but we'll see what happens. Um, so that's just going to put the four bytes that represent our number that we want to divide, that we want to um, that we want to work on, that's going to put them at the end there. And I'll just call this um, number. Or let's, let's call it my number. Because a number might be a reserved word for the assembler, I'm not sure. Okay, some other things, some other useful things, or one other useful thing I'll put up here is... Um, And no, I don't need, we don't need anything else, I don't think. All right. So let's start with code. The first thing we want to do is we want to copy from my number to the dividend location. So we can load A with uh, my number and store that in dividend. And then we're going to have to do that for each of the four bytes. Okay. Now I could do that with a loop. You know, I could loop four times. Eh, I don't know if that's necessary. Um, it would, it would be a little slower to use a loop, but it would take a little less code. Well, it would, it, it would take less bytes in memory, I guess, would be the way to put it. Um, let's, let's see what that would look like. Let's load X with 4. Oops. And then load A with, or it needs to be 3. Load A with my number X and store it into dividend X decrement X and uh, I need to put a label up here start um, decrement X branch if not equal to main alright that would be our loop um, and what that's going to do is it's starting us off with a counter of three and loading a number from this my number location down here plus X and so the first time it's going to get this this 49 here and then it's going to store that in, in the dividend plus X indexed by X and then we're going to decrement X and so we'll go through it four times um, until X hits zero and then that'll branch or the, the last time on zero it won't branch and so we'll come through to the next thing all right, so that'll copy our number into the dividend space. What's our next task? All right, we need to set the divisor to 10. That's simple enough. So load A with um, 10, or let's, let's make it A just to keep things consistent. Try to use hexadecimal everywhere. Store that in divisor, okay? I could, I guess I could, uh, let's bring this over, let's bring this over here and use this as comments. Okay, set the divisor to 10. Alright. I'm using Emacs to write this. I don't know how much Emacs really it, it's not using a. If, um, yeah, it's just using a text mode. It's not in like a special assembler mode, so it's not trying to do anything fancy with the indenting, which is probably a good thing. All right, set the counter to zero. I'm going I think I can use Y for the counter because I don't have. 
there's there's nothing in this there's nothing in the division routine that we call that uses y this only uses a and x so i'm safe to use y as my counter um, for the stack now we want to start our loop so the loop here we'll call the loop um, div 10 All right, so we want to divide the dividend by 10. And so we do that by calling our division routine, div 328. Okay. Now we're going to push the remainder on the stack. And so to do that, we have to get, let's see, actually I'm not sure. Let me check, let's check the uh, instructions here. Always got to keep your programmer's reference guide handy. Okay, where are the instructions? Um, like about 123 Go. this actually isn't the best book for just the instructions themselves but since I already had it up I figured I'd grab it okay find them here all right push yeah that's what I thought okay the only thing we can push on the stack is the accumulator we can't push a memory location on the stack so we've got to load the memory location into the accumulator and load the remainder in there and then we can push it onto the stack make sure I've got PHA that's right PHP is eh, right get the right window here okay so we load the remainder into A, into the accumulator, push it onto the stack. All right, now we need to increment the counter. That's simple. Just increment Y. Now we get to the check if each dividend by the zero part. Okay. So what we need to do here, let's, for instance, we can say compare, we can lo load A with zero compare to dividend All right. so this is going to set the zero byte um, in the status register if the dividend byte is zero if the first dividend byte is zero so if it's not zero we want to branch down to loop two so we'll say branch if not equal or no 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 we want a branch if not equal to copy quotient. So I'll call that copy Q and we'll need to add a label for that a little later. Now we need to compare to dividend plus one, because remember we have three div where we have four dividend bytes that we have to compare. And branch if not equal again to copy Q. Compare dividend plus two branch if not equal to copy Q and compare dividend plus three and branch if not equal to copy Q. Okay, so if any one of those is not equal to zero, we're branching down to where we copy the quotient to dividend and then loop. Otherwise, if we get to here, we want to jump down to loop two. Okay, we'll call this print loop. All right, actually, let's not call it that. Let's just call it loop two, since that's what I've been calling it. All right, now that's right there. So now we need to copy the quotient to the dividend right here. And we do that again 
by doing this little loop right here. Now I could break this off into, or no, sorry, we're not copying that, we're copying the quotient, so it isn't the same thing anyway. But it's going to be similar. So again, we want to set a, um, we need to set it, we need to set our counter. We need to load this time from the quotient and store that in the dividend. So we're copying from the quotient to the dividend this time, not from our memory location in our program. And then we want to loop back to the top. And so we're going to loop back up to div 10 here. Branch, or let's see, we don't even need to branch on anything. We just need to um, jump up to div 10. All right. Otherwise, we're coming down here. Oh, wait a second. I need to change this because right here we're looping. Um, let's see. Yeah, this, this needed the copy Q label for up here. And so this branch needs to go back to copy Q, not up to main. All right. I think it's all coming together here now. And then, yeah, this loop will jump back up to div 10 up here and start all over with the dividend again. All right, so once we come through to, to loop 2, what do we need to do? Well, let's create the label, loop 2. Then we're going to pull a digit off the stack. So let's do that. Um, that's PLA, I think. Yep. I don't use the stack that much, really. It's kind of interesting. Then we want to print that digit. And we do that by calling our out, bass out routine. So that's our little bit of a cheat that we're going to just call that routine to print the digit. We're not going to rewrite that part of the, the kernel today. That's the only part of the kernel code we're going to use is that routine right there. Okay, and then we'll decrement the counter, which is our Y. That's our Y counter that we're using to keep track, or that we were using to keep track of um, the number of digits on the stack. That's what we were, we were incrementing it up here as we divided. Check if the counter is zero, which you do by, um, well, if it's not zero, we're, we're automatically checking by decrementing it. So if it's not zero, branch if not equal, back up to loop two. Okay, so that could be, and then we need to re return so that the code doesn't run on into all this business down here. So that is my first rough go at this. Um, I've kind of thought it through in my head before, but this is the first time I've put, put anything down. All right. So let's let us try to assemble and see if we get any errors. Label name oh label name not in leftmost column. Garbage data at end of statement. All right, let's fix the label name first. I haven't used this uh, assembler a whole lot. Whoops, what was I doing here? Push A, not P A H P H A. Line 71, garbage data at end of statement. Okay. So how do I do a byte thing? Let's see. Um, Well, 
I don't know. That seems straightforward enough. I don't know what's wrong with it. Let's see here. Garbage data and end of statement. Oh, I don't think... I can't label it. Is that the problem? How do I label my byte area? need to put the name ahead of it instead of after it. All right. So it's my number and then byte. Label comes first. Okay. Try to... All right. And it now assembles. So now I have to get it on the disk. Uh, right main and now I'll go back here I have to reload the disk I should have yep so I've got a program on here now called main reload main go back to the monitor and now because I have main starting at 1300, I should have code at 1300, and there it is. So there's my code, which should match up to what we just wrote. And then down here at the end of it, um, let's see what we've got. There's the RTS right there. And so that's followed by, yeah, that's followed by the div, you know what, I'm not sure that's quite right, yeah it is, yeah that's followed by the div um, routine, yeah. And then after the div routine, right here, is the four bytes of our number D2029649 and so they're stored at the very end of the the program that gets loaded all right well let's see if it works okay something's hanging somewhere so I don't know if I can break I don't know if I can break out in this emulator. Let's see. Uh, reset it. It's going to change my colors and everything. Something hung up in there, and I don't think it's too late for me to tell what it was now. All right, so probably what's happening is one of my loops is not is not finishing. So let's think about what's going on in these loops. This first loop here, we load x was zero. We use x as an index, decrement x, and branch if not equal up here. So that should run four times. Um, then you come down here here we increment y and we have all these branch if not equals down to 1333 which is this here which is this other loop which also should be pretty straightforward and then you get this jump Yeah, that might be 
Okay, this jump right here is the one that goes down below to, to the here to the to where it starts pulling back off the uh, pulling back off the stack. All right. Well, let's go. Now it's time to do some debugging. So let's put. Um, Let's put some no ops in this code first of all. Uh, this will give us play. This will give me places to put in break statements, basically, and and find out um, where we're getting stuck, basically. Assemble again. Okay, back to here. Now we've got some no ops in here that we can mess with. So let's change this no op to a break. All right. So now if I disassemble the code, there's a break right there. And if I jump to the code, it still hangs. Well, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> This is a real easy, real easy mistake to make. So I guess I'm glad I made it, so I can show, I can show what happened. Right here. Let me go back to the first one where I'm at right now. Right here. When I branch back up, I'm branching to before I set the counter, I set the loop counter, which means every time I loop, I'm resetting this x to three, and so x is going to be three forever. It's never going to get, it's never really going to get decremented. So what I needed was, um, let's call this copy one and branch to that. I shouldn't have been branching back up to main. I had a bad feeling about branching back up to main, but I wasn't sure why, and now I know why. You always need to set your counter and then start your loop so that when you loop back up, you're not resetting your counter. You only want to set the counter once before the loop starts. So I did the same thing down here since I just copied this. Um, so you know when we branch when we branch from here down to here, we want to set the counter, but then when we branch from here back up, we don't want to reset the counter. So let's call that copy Q2 and call this copy Q2. Now the last question is what about Y? Am I making the same mistake with Y? Uh, I set the counter here? No I'm not because I set that counter. I, I thought of it that time. I set the counter and then I started the loop. So Y is only going to get set once. So now let's go through this business again. really need to streamline this soon. Um, okay, I've got to reset again. Something else I need to figure out. How to do that without uh, resetting it quite so hard. Alright, B load. Did I, I didn't, I need to get, I need to make sure I've got the new disk. All right, B load main. I'll just stick with this color for this time and let's, and I'll find out if it's too hard to read in the video. Um, okay, we still got our no ops in there, but that's okay. 
So now this branch right here, <clears throat> when it branches, if not if x is not zero, it just branches back up to here and not back up to this load x again. All right, so let's jump to 1300. And we hit a break. That's not necessarily good news, but... Okay, so we broke out at 11.3e. So let's see what we've got at 11.3e. Whoops. Why did we break out at 11.3e? That's interesting. Uh... Let's try that again. 113E. What is that 113E? Empty space. Okay, so why am I branching to 113? Well, wait a second. It may not be. Yeah, it is, even in the, even in the, with everything banked in. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Where am I jumping to 113E? Hmm. I don't see that happening anywhere in here. Um, that's curious. Back to the beginning here. Let's set this break and try the jumping. Whoops. 13 OD. Okay, that's where I just, that's that break I just set, so that's okay. Let's change that back to a no op. Uh, that next one's no big deal. Um, let's change this one to a break. Okay, that's where it should have broke. Change that back to a no op. Okay, so that's at 131D. Go down to the next no op. Let's do this one at 1338. Dang it. Okay, that one's at the wrong 113E again. What's before that? Zero. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Okay, so somewhere before this break is where it's getting off track. So let's change this one to a break and see if it's this jump right here that I'm having trouble with. Yeah, okay. So there's an issue with this jump right here to 1349. Okay, let's change this back while I'm here. It's jumping to 1349, which is this PLA. Okay, and then it prints out Hmm. Or it pu pulls the accumulator back off the stack. Oh, I bet I know what's going on. Yeah, I'm 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 screwing up the stack is what's happening. I figured it had to be something like that. I'm gonna have to think about this a bit. Um But what's happening the stack is also used for return addresses. So anytime you JSR off to a location, like I'm doing right here, to print out the 
the character, the digit, th then this next, the, like this next location, 134D, also gets pushed on the stack. That's how the, the CPU knows where to come back to when it hits a return at the end of that routine. <clears throat> so that's what's going on there is I'm, I'm going to have to figure out uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to figure out how to make sure that I'm not clobbering my own stack stuff. Um, this might be something I want to draw out on the whiteboard, actually. Um, because because I'm, I'm pushing... Two, anytime you're pushing two different things on the stack for different reasons, it gets tricky. So I'm pushing return addresses on the stack when I JSR off to FFD2, but I'm also pushing my digits onto the stack, my remainders, as I go through dividing things. And then when I get here, I pull the first one back off the stack, and then I jump off to this location and come back. I don't know. I It seems like that should be okay, but I'm, I'm betting that's where my problem is. I'm betting I'm clobbering my stack somehow. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, let's do one thing here. Let's, um, let's see. This jump goes down to 1349. So that's this PLA. Yeah. Let's just make that a break. Just debugging here. Okay. So that broke out. Yeah, right there. <clears throat> and now let's look at the stack. I'm curious what's actually on the stack at this point. And the stack is at 100, <clears throat> but it's at the bottom of 100, so whoops. 1FF, let's do it that way. Okay, so yeah, and what is the stack pointer? The stack pointer is CC, which means right in here should be where my digits are and I'm not seeing them so yeah I would say I'm clobbering the digits somehow um, with the way I'm with the way I'm hitting the stack I'm seeing a lot of twos in here which makes me think maybe I'm maybe I'm pushing twos on the stack but um, anyway I think I'm close to an hour here, so I think I'm going to stop right here um, since I am going to just continue these um, as I go. So you're going to see everything I do. I don't want to, um, I'm not going to stop and then come back and say, hey, I fixed it. Um, you get to watch me struggle through it. But I think I'll struggle through the next part of this on the whiteboard um, and then we'll come back to the code. But we'll work out what's going on with the stack. It's, e it's easier to deal with stack concepts if you write it out and say okay we're pushing this number in and then we're pushing this you know and then popping this out um, and that'll be easier that way so that will be the next video I believe and then we'll be back to the code after that so I hope this one has been interesting and thanks for watching good night